Hey, what's up guys? 104 from Maverick checking in with the first in a brand new series of videos, 104 Fuel School, where we're going to teach you guys how to air air refuel in every aircraft in DCS that can do so in as much detail as we possibly can, starting in this episode with the FA-18C. Now, I've already done a pre-release video on the air-to-air -air refuel in the Hornet. However, after spending some time in it, I thought I would update the topic with a more in-depth look at how we can carry out the procedure. We'll start at the very beginning for anyone who wants to practice offline and discuss how you actually go around making a, a refueling training mission using the mission editor. Then we'll go ahead and actually fly a full refueling sortie with some narration going over how you contact the tanker, how you find the tanker, as well as actually making contact with the, the basket itself and the disconnect procedure. Then we'll talk about some of the common mistakes people make while trying to air-to-air -air refuel along with dispelling some of the misconceptions regarding how the procedure is supposed to be done. We'll finish off at the end of the video guys with a summary covering everything that we've learned so that um, you guys that are watching the video can go away confident that you have everything to hand so the next time you head up to the tanker you're going to be sure that you're doing it the right way and then um, you're going to be in the right you're going to be in the right frame of mind you're going to be in the right mindset to pass some gas. Okay so first things first we'll uh, tackle the mission editor. From the DCS start screen, just simply select the Mission Editor tab and then click Create New Mission. Select which terrain you want to use. In this case, we're going to use the fantastic Persian Gulf map, which is easily my favourite terrain in the game. Okay, so now we have our map. We need to get some aircraft. Select the Aircraft tab on the left-hand side to insert a unit onto the map. You can spawn it anywhere you want and just use the actual pre-selected one there and then go to the right hand side once you've spawned it on the map and specify what aircraft it is you want. In this case we want to place a KC-130 tanker from the USA. Now we have our tanker on the map, we want to get it set up so that it orbits in a particular area. So we're going to set the height that we want the tanker to operate at and give it some waypoints. So we set 16,000 feet in here and give it a speed of 330 knots. It's very important to remember that this is the ground speed that you are setting, not the air speed, okay? This is the aircraft's ground speed that we're setting here. Okay, so now we want to give our tanker some waypoints to work between. So we'll spawn here at 16,000 feet doing 330 knots and we're going to set the first waypoint and then set another one out here. So our tanker like I said will spawn and it'll fly to waypoint 1 and then on to waypoint 2 remaining at 16,000 feet. However if we don't give it any more instructions it'll just return to base so we're going to give we're going to go to waypoint 1 and we're going to give it some instructions for a job to do once it gets to waypoint 1. So we select the aircraft and we go to the drop down for waypoint 1, click on the advanced waypoint actions, go to add, uh, make sure that perform task is selected and then go to the action select orbit, confirm that the race track orbit is set and it's very important to remember to set the speed that we want the orbit to start at and remain at. So this will be the speed that the aircraft stays at. Now it's not automatically set to what you have in the waypoint, so it's very important to remember that. So now our tanker will spawn in at 16,000 feet, it will fly to waypoint 1 and then you'll start orbiting between waypoint 1 and waypoint 2. The tanker will always make left hand turns when he's in his orbit. So now we're going to set up the radio frequency, we're going to assign this tanker to 261, we're going to set the skill to excellent and we're going to give it a little name here as well. We'll call him Texaco since that's his call sign. Now we can come down and get the TACAN information set up by going to advanced waypoint actions. You see that TACAN's already selected in there. If it's not, all you would do is go to perform command and then select activate TACAN and then put whichever channel you want. In this case, we're going to use 31 X-ray. You could also use Yankee, but in this case, we're going to use X-ray. And you can put a little prefix in here. We're going to put TEX for Texaco. You don't have to have anything in there. You can just leave it blank if you want. 
Um, we're going to just copy and paste the Texaco name to the pilot name so that we can um, go back in here and you'll see that it says the units assigned to Texaco, which is the unit that we're working with. So 31 X-ray is going to be our TACAN and 261 is going to be our radio frequency. And you can see 261 up there on the top right. So because we're a trained professional, we're going to go and put this information in a brief for our friends or in case we forget in, in future. So we'll put in there for the blue side, Texaco 261, we'll put in the, uh, the TACAN as well, 31 X-ray, and um, we'll also put in a, a, just an additional bit of information there that he's orbiting at 16,000 feet. All right, so we are all set up with a tanker now in the mission. Now all we need to do is actually get an aircraft for us to fly in. So we're going to go back up to the aircraft tab. We're going to click anywhere on the map to spawn an aircraft. It's already selected on the USA, so now we're going to find the Hornet on the list. So there we go, the FA-18C, Lot 20. We'll select that. So now we've got a Hornet on the map. However, the skill is set to high, which means it's an AI um, aircraft. So we're going to change that in a second. For now, we'll just get ourselves set up at 15,000 feet, 1,000 feet below the tanker. And we'll set our air speed, sorry, our ground speed to 400 knots. And now we'll change the skill to client. This is very important. If you want to fly it, make sure you select it to client. And we'll go and change our call sign to Uzi so that we're Uzi 11. And I'll put my, uh, my little tail number in there, 104. So there we have a, an F-18 Hornet spawning at 15,000 feet doing 400 knots ground speed, call sign Uzi 11. We'll now click on the payload tab to set, set up the aircraft. We're going to select the 104 VFA skin, um, courtesy by um, 104 Fallen, who's done a great job putting our skins together. So we're going to be using the 104 VFA skin. We're selecting a payload that has two fuel tanks. We're going to decrease the fu internal fuel to 50% so that when we get on the tanker, we're not going to fill up with fuel too quickly. So you see we have two fuel tanks, 50% fuel, and we've selected the skin that we want to use as well. So now we're going to drag our aircraft behind the tanker so that we don't have too far to go to get behind them. And we're going to add a waypoint in the direction of the tanker so that when we spawn we're flying in the direction that the tanker's actually flying as well, rather than flying due north or true north, whatever it is you spawn in as default. If you wanted to, fly, to uh, spawn in sorry, at an airbase, you would just drag the aircraft over to an airbase and then select take off from ramp in this drop down menu. You've also got take off from parking hot or take off from runway available, but take off from ramp will give you cold and dark on the actual um, ramp somewhere and then you taxi out to the runway. We're going to change it back to turning point and get ourselves set up back behind the tanker so that when we spawn in, we're going to be at 15,000 feet uh, doing 400 knots. Not put in 16 there, but change that to five. So we're pretty much good to go now, guys. Um, we're going to be behind. We're going to spawn in behind the tanker. We can copy and paste this aircraft if we want to. Um, if we want to fly with a wingman, so I'll show you how to do that in a second. We'll just double check here. The radio frequency was two six one. You see that we're three zero five. So we're going to click on the radio presets. Now you see listed here, guys. This is all the preset radio channels in the aircraft. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that two six one is actually one of these frequencies. And you see there, it's channel sixteen. 261 megahertz and that's the frequency that we're going to dial up sort of the channel that we're going to dial up when we look to contact the tanker if our frequency wasn't there we could just type anything in here if it was 255 or or anything else 259 that we wanted to use we could just add that frequency in there now if we wanted to do this aircraft uh, sorry this training sorted with a friend we could just um say basically give the the aircraft a, a name so that our friends know which aircraft to go into so we're going to be client one we're going to copy this client one aircraft just by pressing left control C and then left control V just to paste as if you were doing a Word document to paste the aircraft there. So we're going to change that to client number two. We'll change it to two, 105, Uzi 21, and we'll just change where the waypoint goes. So if we wanted to, we could do this training mission with a friend. He could spawn in that aircraft and we'll spawn in this one. So now we're going to go and uh, go to file and click on save as and give the mission a name you can call it anything you want we're going to go ahead and call it a air to air refueling training or something like that AAR test one and then save it if you want to make sure that you can um, have external views and stuff like that, just go up to the top where it says customize, click on mission options and on the left hand side for enforce 
Um, just make sure that's all selected there. So you've got your F10 options, your external views, make sure that's selected on the left and the right hand side. And you've got your F10 map options as well. You can select that to all and then just resave the mission. And that's you guys, you are good to go. So you can now um, start behind the tanker. You can contact him on the radio and you can tune his frequency on the TACAN as well. Okay guys, we're now in the mission that we just made in the mission editor. Welcome to the beautiful Persian Gulf. We're just to the west of the islands that we uh, seen in the mission editor where we placed the aircraft and the tanker. So now we're going to go ahead and explain how you actually use the TACAN to find the tanker in the F-18. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the UFC and click on the TACAN button itself. You'll see the number one comes in there. Then go down it on and off. Make sure that it says on on the UFC screen there. And then you can put in the TACAN frequency that you want, which is 31 X-ray, which is the frequency we're looking for. Because it's a tanker and it's in the air, we want to make sure that we're in transmit receive mode. We're also in air to air mode, which is the, the AA. And now it's telling us that the tanker is 1.9 miles away at a bearing of 285. And if we press the TACAN button in the HSI there, it gives us the information on the HUD now. That's a very useful piece of information. We can see it on the HSI and the moving map. It gives us an icon, not only where it is on the map, but then it gives us an icon on the outside of the compass as well as the, the range information. We can change over to our moving map as well so that we can actually see on the, the map itself where the tanker is and which direction he's heading it. So we're going to go back to the black screen here and um, yeah, we'll have a look over. You see that's where the tanker is. Uh, we've seen it on the HSI and it's verified there that he's in the same place that the HSI says he is. We're going to go and deal with a little uh, inlet ice bug that we've got at the moment in the in the game which is uh, not really supposed to be happening but it's not, not a, ma a massive deal. So now we have the TACAN set up, guys. That's Like I said, it's all set up on the HSI there. We have it boxed, so it's talking to us on the HUD. So now we're just going to go ahead and um, scroll through our COM1 channels. Now, if you remember, it was channel 16 was the one for 261. And you see on the UFC, when we get to channel 16, it says 261. So we're going to go and click that in. And that tunes the tanker's frequency. We can then press the radio button and uh, contact the tanker and ask him to rejoin. And he's going to come back and um, let us know that we are cleared to go to the, the rejoin position at 16,000 feet. So one thing that a lot of people do wrong with contacting on the radio, especially in multiplayer, is when you're in the air, you have to remember to press the right alt button with the radio button. On the ground, you can just press the radio button and that works. It come, the radio menu comes up. But when you're in the air, you have to press right alt and the radio button uh, for the radio menu to come up. So as long as you have the correct frequency selected on your COM1 radio, and you press right alt in the com, uh, sorry, the radio menu, uh, you'll be able to select F6 for the tanker, contact the tanker you want, and then ask for a uh, clearance in, which he'll, he'll give to you. Okay, so before we get any closer, we're going to do our um, before refueling checklist. The big one is the master arm. We obviously want to make sure that is in a safe position. Always want to make sure master arm's in a safe position, guys. And the radar is off, nose cold, switch is safe. So radar in standby or in the off position, those are the two main ones. The next um, big one is the actual refuel probe itself. And the um, you can configure the, the fuel lines if you wish, or you can just leave them in a normal position. But yeah, the refuel probe is the next big one on the checklist. We're going to activate the refuel probe once we get a little bit closer to the tanker. But the, the main thing to emphasize, guys, nose cold, switch is safe. You want to be checking that at 10 miles, really. Um, we spawned in behind the tanker, so it's a little bit different. Normally, though, you wouldn't get closer to the tanker um, than kind of 8 miles, 10 miles without being nose cold, switch is safe, just obviously for, for safety reasons. All right, so now we're going to speed up time a little bit here, guys, while we close in on the tanker and we rejoin on the left-hand side. So we're approaching the left hand side of the tanker now. This is known as the observation position. As, as you guys all know, because you're all trained professionals as well. This is the observation position, guys. You always join the tanker on the left hand side 
um, especially if you are refueling with people who you don't normally refuel with or they're from another squadron or something like that you might not be on the radio with them um, they're all expecting you to be on the left hand side as you join the tanker um, because that's the, the NATOPS procedure as you join on the left then you go to the pre-contact position and the the reform area is on the right hand side so we're, we're uh, going to move from the, the observation position to the pre-contact position we've selected the probe out and now we're just going to get the aircraft settled in and get ready to uh, take some fuel. We're going to contact the tanker and let him know that we're in the pre-contact position. He's going to say clear contact and start extending the hose out. Ready, now, contrary to what I said in my previous video, guys, you don't actually have to use an, an awful lot of trim. That's one of the mistakes I made early on, as I um, felt that you needed to use quite a lot of trim. But you don't really need to do any sort of trimming unless the aircraft's taking on a lot of fuel. But at this stage, really, FCS should be looking after everything trim-wise and you should be getting a good grip on things. The aircraft should be nice and stable at this position. Okay, we're going to quickly pause the um, video here just for a second while we just point out the refuel probe underneath the Hercules on the left-hand side. It's the exact same probe on the right-hand side of the aircraft, so it's not any different from which side you're going to, but this is what you're focusing on for the whole time during the procedure, guys, as you're approaching the aircraft to make contact with the basket. You don't look at the basket at all, okay? Instead, you're just focusing at this refuel probe that you can see in front of you where the green light will be flashing as you approach and get closer. Now, as once we make contact with the basket, we're then going to switch your frame of reference over to the right-hand side on the right of the canopy there where I'm highlighting with the mouse here. And we're going to be looking to line up the canopy there with the USAF symbol on the side of the tanker aircraft. You'll see what I mean as we get closer. Alright, so as we approach the, the tanker, like I said, our main point of reference is the refuel pod underneath the tanker itself. Now, we're uh, we're having quite looks to the right just to have a look at where our probe is so that we can make a, a, a mental map of where our probe is without actually having to look at it. Now, the, the secret to success here, guys, right, is to keep staring at the refuel pod on the tanker and use your peripheral vision to line up the basket with where you know that your fueling probe is. So as we're getting closer, we're just staring at that refuel pod, guys. That's all we're looking at. I want you to do the same as you're watching the video and just try and track the basket with your peripheral vision without actually looking at the basket. So as you get closer, it's okay to take a moment just to steady up at the back. You don't have to ram it in first time. Just take a little moment at the back just to steady up, get yourself nice and sorted. And now not looking at the basket, looking at the pod, still looking at the pod, not the basket, not the basket, looking at the pod. In we go. Now the, now the focus switches to the right hand side and we're looking for that USAF symbol. You see it on the side of the tanker? You see the little grey star there? That's what we're, lo we're looking to keep our canopy line lined up somewhere around about that uh, symbol. Now you can see if we drop back too far the, li the green light goes off and we have to push forward in a little bit. That's the most important thing about once you're in guys, okay? Is you need to drive forward until you see the green light come on and you're lined up with that little symbol on the right hand side. You see how we're keeping the symbol just on the canopy rail somewhere around about there and we're not too far back from where we need to be. So we'll zoom in, as you can see there, the symbol's nice and lined up. We're a bit far forward at the moment, but that's okay. That's the symbol there, just highlighting it. The main thing is just to, to not be rear of that symbol, okay? We don't want to be after that symbol because then we run the risk of um, jumping out of the basket accidentally. You see the light flashing when our internal fuel tanks are topped up. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect now, guys, and we're going to do a couple of more connections, just quick ones back and forward. And what I want you guys to do, okay, is, 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 is start practicing this technique with me as you're watching the video. So we're going to contact guys, all right? But I don't want you to look at the basket at all with like your main point of focus. All I want you to do is stare at the refuel pod on the tanker and use your peripheral vision, all right? So imagine that you're flying right now. We're approaching the tanker. You're approaching the tanker, okay? And you're using your peripheral vision to line up the, the basket with our refuel probe. So we're looking at the pod, not the basket. Getting ourselves nice and lined up. Taking our time, no rush. Looking at the pod still, not looking at the basket, not looking at the basket. Using the peripheral vision, and it goes. 
and we keep driving forward until we see the, the United States Air Force logo on the side of the tanker. We check it, it's on the right on the, the canopy rail. And we've got a green or green flashing light from the pod. We're all good. Alright, we'll go back and do it again. So again, guys, we're not looking at the basket, alright? This is not a joke, this is not a magic trick, alright? That If you can't connect to the tanker, guys, it's because you are looking at the basket, alright? It's not difficult. All we're doing is flying formation from that refueling pod. Now, the tanker's just started turning, which is good. I want to show you guys that it's just the exact same principle, okay? It doesn't matter what speed the tanker's doing or how or where it's going, alright? We're just looking at that refuel pod. Alright, so let's go again with the peripheral vision, guys. We're staring straight ahead at the refuel pod. We're not looking at the basket. We're using our peripheral vision to line up our pod with the basket. And we're just creeping in, just nice and easy. Just creeping in. Look at my throttle, guys. You see how... Hold on, we're getting the basket. Peripheral vision, and we're in. We're driving forward. Now look at the throttle, guys. You see how it's little, co little commits with the throttle and then back. Just little commits, little commits, back and forward, back and forward. We're keeping, we're keeping the throttle moving, we're, we're walking the throttle all the time, we're keeping the aircraft moving. Now we're going to come back and do another one. So again, maybe pay attention to the throttle this time guys, when you see me coming in, you see I, I don't power up and then just leave the power there and then start pulling back. It's just little commits, just little pushes, just li little pushes forward guys, just to get that momentum and hold that momentum, staring at the refuel pod, using the peripheral vision to put the basket into the probe. We're not looking at the basket as our primary frame of reference here guys. So we're creeping forward, nice and lined up, just little commits on the power, just little commits. Lining up with a peripheral vision, staring at the pod, peripheral vision, looking good, let's start driving it in, in we go, keep driving until we see the light, and we see the USAF logo on the side, we see the logo on the side, start just doing what we need to do to stay in this position guys, staying nice and calm, nothing to panic about, we've done all the hard work, taking a breath and remembering that the, the, the difficult parts behind us, now all we need to do is just stay in this position. So we're looking at the fuel pod under the tanker and we're checking, that's our two main points of reference now guys, is the tanker pod and the logo on the side. Now it's the same on the on the right pod, it's just that you put the 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 logo on the left hand side of the canopy on when you're refueling from the right pod. Alright, the disconnect, the most important thing guys at this stage is to power down and go backwards before you move right, okay? We look left, we look right, we look left and we look right again and then we start moving to the right hand side. But the most important thing for the disconnect is that you bring the power back first, the aircraft starts moving rearwards before you go anywhere else, okay? You go backwards first, then you look around you twice and then you start moving to the right to join in what's known as the reform area. So if you were fueling with uh, two or three other guys and you were the first one off, you would be the closest guy to the tanker and you would sit and wait here for the other guys to um, finish their procedure and then they would start flying formation in the in, on the right hand side of the tanker off of you. So there you go guys. So what we'll do now is we'll uh, change over and we'll start talking about some of the common mistakes that people make when they're trying to do the refuel. Okay guys, by a long way, the most common mistake that people make when they're trying to refuel is they're looking at the basket and making the basket their primary um, source of reference. Now, it sounds very counterintuitive. You're trying to obviously connect with the basket, so naturally you want to spend a lot of time looking at that to make it your primary focus. Unfortunately, that, that, that really will make the job a lot more difficult for you if you do that. Like I said earlier on, you want to be focusing on the fuel pod at the bottom of the tanker, okay? It doesn't matter which aircraft you're refueling from, okay? If it's the KC-130 or the S3, you're still looking at the fuel pod, not the basket. Now, you'll see here, someone who's looking at the basket okay what will happen is the closer that they get to it the more oscillization that will go through the aircraft because they're not referencing something that's stable so you see here that we're looking at the basket here you'll start to oscillate up and down and then you end up just getting yourself right out of shape because you're you're trying to focus on on the wrong point basically okay you're flying formation off from the wrong reference point so what we always want to be doing is looking at the fuel pod if you take your eye off the fuel pod and look at the basket, you will end up just throwing the aircraft around, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with the refuel.
So this is what we're seeing here. This pilot's looking at the basket rather than looking at the fuel pod. So if, if, you, if this looks familiar to you guys, then I promise you 100% what you're doing wrong is you're focusing too much on the basket, okay? Like we talked about earlier on, what we want to do is just nail our primary focus on the refueling pod where the basket is actually coming out from. And we fly formation from that point. The second biggest mistake that I see people making on a regular basis is they're chasing the basket in close now. What I mean by that is what you see here. The pilot's missed the basket on his first attempt and rather than going back and resetting, he's now basically choosing to try and dunk the, um, the probe into the basket when he's up close now. This is not a safe thing for you to be doing because basically what happens is you make the basket your primary source of reference um, subconsciously. Uh, you stop looking at the refuel pod as your reference point and subsequently the aircraft starts maneuvering all over the place because you're you're not flying formation from the correct point that you should be so if you miss on your first attempt guys this is what you should do okay drop back like you've just seen me do here and then try again and then if you miss again just go back and then reset the connection to the basket should be done in one movement okay where you go forward and then you connect not go forward miss back a little bit try again miss try back and then no if you miss just come back like you see me doing reset take a breath remember that you do i mean there's no there's no rush here unless you're mega low on fuel you shouldn't be in a stage where you're anywhere near thinking about panicking just take just come back 10 15 feet take a breath reset set up your visual cues again Focus on the refueling pod, use the peripheral vision to line up the basket with your fuel probe and just creep it in, creep it in, creep it in, creep it in, and then boom, we're in. Nice and steady, no, no running around the basket trying to smash that probe in there. Remember guys, throughout the full procedure, we're always working the throttle and the other controls by making minute adjustments. There is no magic position in the throttle where we, we select a position and the aircraft stays in the same place. We're always working the throttle, even when we're connected to the basket and we're trying to hold the same position. Where the throttle is always moving. You can see here that we're, we're making minute little inputs on not only the throttle but the stick as well. The tanker's turning at the moment, so we're making some little small adjustments on the rudder as well to keep us nice and, and stable. But the main thing I want to emphasize is that there is no magic position, like I said, with the throttle, guys. You're always working the throttle all the time while you're connected behind the tanker. It's never really something that you get to let up. If you leave the throttle in one position, the aircraft either speeds up too quickly or slows down too much. Either way, it's not good news. So remember that you're always going to be working the throttle, guys. Air to air refueling is a task, and it's a task that if you're doing it well, it's going to be keeping you busy the whole time you're behind it. It's very easy when you don't have a lot of experience refueling to suffer from a mild form of panic once you've actually connected to the basket. This is basically down to you've achieved your goal essentially, you put so much um, effort and energy into reaching this position, now you've finally arrived and a lot of people basically just lose composure a little bit at that point and, and sort of forget everything that they've been trying to do. So te generally this is what will happen, You'll, you've been working for ages trying to get in and oh my god we're in the basket um, and then you, you basically just now start to forget the basics, you're adding in too much power the aircraft is going to start moving all around the place and rather than focusing on what you're supposed to be focusing on as in the the refueling pod in front of the aircraft you're basically your capacity is at 100 percent trying to deal with your aircraft that's moving all around the place and but the thing is nothing's changed a, a lot of people defeat themselves mentally here they uh, you have to remember that all you've done is connect to the basket okay the flight model hasn't changed there's n there's no there's no massive consequences for our aircraft because we're connected into the basket, okay? All it is is a hose coming out of the tanker and there's a basket on the end and we've put our probe into it, alright? So the way that we're flying nice and steady behind the tanker when we're preparing to connect, that's the exact same thing we're looking for post-connection. Do you know what I mean? The, the aircraft hasn't actually changed, so we're, 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 no, we're not interested in the basket or the hose, okay? So again, all, all we're looking at looking forward is the the actual refueling pod itself. We're not looking at anything else. So once we're connected, we're just looking at the refueling pod and our second point of reference, which is the United States Air Force symbol on the side of the tanker in this case.
and then once we're connected and we have our visual cues lined up we can see the Air Force symbol on the right hand side of the canopy rail and our primary focus of the fueling pod is right in front of us then we just do whatever it takes to stay in this position by making small adjustments on the throttle and the stick and the rudder if we need to just like you've seen in the clip before this one. As I've mentioned a few times guys, on the KC-130 the main visual point to be referencing is the fueling pod under the wing where the hose comes from. It doesn't matter if that's on the left hand side or the right hand side, it's the same on each side. We're just focusing on that dead ahead and then as soon as we're in the basket we're driving forward, keeping our alignment until we see the logo of the United States Air Force on the right hand side of the canopy on the left if we're on the left or the left hand side of the canopy if we're taking fuel from the right. It doesn't really matter. So as long as we have those two reference points lined up, then we're good to take gas. We'll be sitting here nice and comfortably for a while, and we'll just keep transferring until the job's done. So we're looking straight ahead at the refuel pod under the wing, and we're checking to the right to make sure that the logo on the side of the tanker is lining up the right-hand side of our canopy. So the visual alignment cues for the S3 guys are more or less just the same, okay? Our primary reference point is still going to be the refuel pod underneath the tanker. We're going to stare at that and then use our peripheral vision to actually get our boom into the basket. We're not going to make the basket our primary source of, of visual reference. We're going to keep looking at the actual pod underneath the tanker. Obviously this isn't a United States Air Force Hercules, so we're not going to have any Air Force logos on the side of it that we can reference. There is however a very handy little reference at the back of the S3. There's a little um, radio transmitter or receiver just above the arrestor hook. And so what we're going to do is we're going to connect, we're going to drive forward until we can see that little box, that little instrument um, at the back of the tanker itself. And then we're going to just creep until we can line up that with the, the arrestor hook as well. We want to be able to just see the arrestor hook on the S3. It's, it's, it's very hard to miss, guys. It's black and white. So just like we did with the Air Force logo, instead of the Air Force logo, this time we're using the black and white hook and that little box just above the hook, that little instrument there. We're just aligning up... Um, probably a little antenna or something we're just as long as our canopy is somewhere around about that antenna and the arrestor hook of the tanker then we're in pretty good shape and we can stay in the right position so that's what our main focus is now is looking ahead at the fueling pod for a for central alignment and then looking at the arrestor hook on the tanker and the little antenna at the back there Okay guys, we'll quickly summarise the main points of the tutorial so that you can take away some lessons and start practising behind the tanker. So, number one, don't look at the basket, okay? That's the most important thing to remember guys, is don't look at the basket. Number two, we need to be using our peripheral vision, alright? That might be something you may have to train a little bit more to get better at. You might be really good at it already and you just don't know it yet because you haven't been using the, the proper technique to contact the tanker. So, sorry, to contact the basket. So peripheral vision is number two. That's the, that, that's the, the second biggest thing that you need to be aware of and, and start working on. Uh, number three is your throttle work, okay? Remember that we're always working the throttle, guys. That's a, one of the most important things. It's, it's very counterintuitive. To stay in the one place, you have to be moving the throttle around an awful lot, okay? So number three is the throttle work. Let's get some more energy into the throttle, guys. Don't be lazy with it, okay? Don't be looking for that magic position where the aircraft's just going to stay in the same place all the time. Number four is our reference points. We need to make sure that we're using good, sensible reference points on the tanker aircraft. Now, you shouldn't have to be lining up anything um, with regards to the HUD, like I mentioned earlier on in the first video that we did with the AAR. Some people got really confused with that. But if the tanker was doing different speeds, they couldn't see the pitch ladder on the HUD and stuff. So rather than using the HUD as a visual reference, let's start nailing these visual reference cues on the tanker itself, guys. The refuel pod underneath the tanker and then some sort of reference on the side of the tanker so that you can keep driving forward and then use your two visual cues, the one straight in front of you and the one to the left or right so that you know that you're far enough forward or not. And then you, and then it's basically just a case of just doing that over and over again and, and building the confidence. Refueling is a very enjoyable task, guys. It's something that um, I love doing in all the aircraft and it's not something that gets me stressed out. I actually find it quite, quite relaxing, to be honest. And it's, it's extremely enjoyable. So um, if you have any questions, 
chuck them in the, the comment section and I'll try and uh, help you out and we'll, we'll, we'll deal with any further issues that you're working with. But to be honest, I think if you guys just take on the temps that are in this uh, tutorial, then you're going to be in good shape. But like I said, guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to you. And I will see you next time on the next episode of 104 Fuel School. Maverick out.